Stephanie and her students write a summary together during their shared interactive writing session. As they write, they use a rubric to reflect on their choices and whether their summary makes sense and has all of the elements of an effective summary. So here we have our just words that we just finished highlighting on the text. Now the one thing I noticed is that, remember we used the synonym for pieces? What word could we take that out and what word can we replace that with? Uh, James. Particles. Thank you. Okay. So I made sure to use a synonym for pieces and particles and I already included rapidly instead of fast. So those are two synonyms that we used in our gist list. Now we're going to turn this gist list into our summary. Now remember our anchor chart on what an effective summary is. So what is the first thing that it says a summary should have? To include the title and the author. That's right. I'm going to include the title and author. Space Junk by Susan Doyle. So I have the text, the name of the text, I have the author. Now I'm going to include the main idea of the text, the overall main idea. What is it that it explains? How space junk can occur in Earth and space. So it can, it's, it's describing how space junk can occur as well as what? Um, how um, space junk can affect us. So I'm going to combine both those, those ideas and attach it, add it to the beginning of the sentence. The text Space Junk by Susan Doyle explains what happens and when do we leave these objects in space? Nitesh? Um, when we go on space missions. So we leave in space during space explorations. Now what we're going to do is use our gist list to put all the main ideas together. Okay? How can we put the first few gist list, gist list words together? Humans leave objects in space such as satellites and rockets. Okay, so we have humans, we already have space junk, humans leave, and I can cross it off as I go so I know that I've covered my gist list. Humans leave junk behind in space such as what? Um, satellites or rockets. I've included five words, five of my gist words in one sentence. Summarizing, making it brief. Now I need to start adding how this is a problem. So I'm going to start the sentence, but help me finish it off using the rest of the gist words. This junk can cause problems. How? Oh, when it collides, it explodes into smaller particles. So this junk can cause problems when it collides. Okay, so we have collides, particles. Now we've got move rapidly, damage shuttles, crash earth mirror that we need to put together in our summary. These particles can move rapidly, which, which could cause damage to space shuttles. Now, I'm going to use your ideas. I'm just going to change the wording a bit. Moving rapidly. Okay, it's a different way to start the sentence. We have a nice flow. It can damage. Keep saying space junk, space junk. What happens if I keep saying that? It gets too repetitive. What can it damage? Shuttles. What can this junk do? Nina. Crash into Earth, such as the mirror. And I have crash in Earth. And we can tie in the example as well in here. Am I done? My summary's done. I have my title, and my author, my main idea, my supporting details, my important details. Am I done? No. What am I missing? And we can look at the anchor chart. Mamta. You have to add the key message or the author's purpose. So, what is the purpose of this text? Remember we said it can have three purposes. It can inform, it can persuade, it can entertain. What is the purpose of this text, Abraham? To persuade. It's to persuade us? In oh, what ways? Inform. It, pardon? To inform us. Why is it informing us and not necessarily persuading us? It's informing us how space junk um, could affect uh, Earth and um, it gives facts and information. That's right. Okay, so it's giving us a lot of information of what space junk is and how it can affect us. Not only on Earth, but where else? In space. So I'm going to make sure that I include the author's purpose. And as always, after we finish writing, we read the text, we make sure that we reread it. And what are some questions that we ask ourselves as we 
read our summaries. Did I include the author's purpose? Okay, did I include the author's purpose? Did I include the author's main ideas? And actually, I'm going to record these ideas. It's another question we ask ourselves after we read the summary. Uh, does it make sense? That's important. And if it doesn't, what are we going to do about it? We have to make changes. Any other questions you would ask yourself? Uh, is it brief enough? After reading these texts, these are the questions we're going to ask ourselves. And then we're going to do our good copy. And in our good copy, we'll make any changes. The text space junk, I'll make sure I underline my text, by Susan Doyle, because it can have consequences, not only on technology and space, but also on human life. So I'm asking myself, did I include the author's main ideas? I think so. Does it make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it brief? Do we use our own language? Yes. That's right. I think we did a really good job, especially because we also added our own synonyms for some of the words. What we're going to do right now is take a look at a rubric for summarizing. What we used for, to create this rubric is the anchor chart. When we said this is what should be included in a summary and this is what makes an effective summary, all those components are in this rubric. We're going to look at the knowledge and understanding se section here. And if we look at the level three, which is shaded, okay, that's the area you want to focus on. In your introduction, did you include the title and author? All right. Did you explain the main ideas of the text? Level three is, I have included many of the important facts to support the main idea. Therefore, I answered most of the questions. Which questions am I referring to there? Vivetha? Who, what, where, when, why, and how? Good. Who, what, where, when, why, and how? Those are the questions. Now, you've answered most of them for level three. I have included a few interesting but unimportant ideas in my summary. Sometimes, you might just include one or two facts. When you reread and you ask your questions, is it brief enough? Hopefully you'll get rid of all of them. Okay? In the next section, which is the thinking section, that you have effectively explained the key message or purpose of the text. Communication. This is where we're looking at how you've put the ideas together. Have I effectively written the summary in my own words? If you use the GIST strategy, you're on your way because you've just pulled out keywords. Use synonyms whenever possible, and you're putting it in your own words. So remember our learning intention from today. What is it that we are learning to do today? We are learning to summarize. Okay, summarize what in particular? Nonfiction text. Nonfiction text. Now we're going to be sharing the success criteria. So what you're going to be doing is in partners, you're going to create your own summary. What do you think I'm looking for in your summaries. Main ideas. Okay, I'm looking for you to put the main idea. Aditi. Uh, title and author. Okay, I'm looking for the title and the author. Davey. Um, the key message. That's right. The author's purpose or the key message. What am I looking for you to use? Mamta. Um, your own language. That's right, your own words. When you're putting your ideas all together, what is it that I'm looking for? Naima. Um, uh, to write details in logical order. Make sure that you've included the main idea, that somewhere in there there's a title and the author, that you've included the author's purpose and the key message, that you've used your own words, and it's in a logical order. You are going to get a text, and you're going to be working with your partners. You and your partner are going to get a graphic organizer, where you can list your gist words and then turn those words into your summary. Mm -hmm.